That's awesome. kind of why I do a check. <laughs> David. Unmute oh. yourself, Dave. I'm trying. There we go. There you are. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Okay. It just took my wife's touch. That's okay. So you're ready, Dave? Yep. Okay, Kim, you're still ready? Jennifer, you're all ready? Yes, sir. Okay. In that case, I'm going to call the meeting of Slutman's meeting to the town of Acton, Maine for May 6, 2020. First item is loot the flag. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to, and the, to the republic, which stands, stands one, one nation, 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 nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, liberty, liberty justice, and justice for all. For all. <coughs> Thank you, everyone. Good luck on that. <coughs> okay, <laughs> this is our third Zoom meeting, I believe, that we've had. So we seem to be working out fairly well. Um, okay. Next is Town Administrator Weekly Update. Jen, floor is yours. Thank you. All right, so hopefully you guys can hear me a little better tonight. Um, I've changed locations, so um, hopefully it's a little more clear. Uh, the first thing I wanted to talk to you about was um, I've gotten two calls regarding mass gathering permits. So I just wanted to kind of talk to you about, um, I think the direction that you know the advice that we're giving them or to make sure that it's the board's advice um so mass gathering permits are are required for anybody any gathering over 200 people so based on the governor's order is it safe to assume that we're not entertaining mass gathering permits at this time i would say yes we are not david kim no, no we can't. Can't, can't have one <laughs> so the uh one of the calls was from the um i think ed Ed, you mentioned them a week or so ago, the VW, the Volkswagen Club. Yep. Uh, they're not sure what was going on. At the time that I had spoken to them, he wasn't aware that uh, the Acton Fair had canceled. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately, that's probably headed in the same direction. But he did did ask me to ask, so I told him that I would. Um, so until it's lifted, we're not going to be accepting those, correct? Right. Because right. actually, what does the governor's order say? It doesn't even get to 50 until... July? So, uh, uh, June. June, June 1st, it gets to 50. Yeah. But he's, I mean, he, if he needs a mass gathering permit, that puts him at, you know, well over 200, 250. Sure. Yeah. 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 So we can't even do it according to the state. And the 50 stays until <clears throat> right through August. So, yeah. Right. Right. So. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to ask you guys about was the um, some stipends regarding cable. So, um, as we're aware, during the shutdown of the, you know, four, six weeks that we we're at, you guys authorized um, the town to pay one stipend each for the two empl the two people that were regularly filming. Uh, now that we are kind of getting back on track, we're having uh, Zoom meetings. Um, it is different, you know, it's somebody different that we're paying the stipend now, but what am I doing with the other two people? Are we, um, as far as, you know, as far as the stipend, are we stopping to pay that now that or am I continuing? What is your pleasure? Dave and Kim? We're going to be having other committees start getting up and running, right? It'll be via Zoom. Yeah, none, okay. will, be, yeah, none will be live film. Okay. And is there any way either one of them can learn how to do the Zoom, or is it only one person that is? I mean, I know Dan's doing it for us, but I just I didn't know to give them work, I guess. It's, I, I mean, it's certainly possible that we could, you know, we could show them. Oh, sorry. I mean, does Dan have time to do, you know, all these meetings that are going to be coming up, I guess. Is... And, well, I'll let David speak, and then I'll answer that. Okay. Yeah. Go, ahead. Go ahead, Dave. I think right now, um, and Dan's doing a good job. If Dan can continue doing it, I think we probably just stick, stick with this route if we can. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I myself believe that um the two uh ladies there that are are doing it now um i think we're, we're what are we what are they scheduled like one a week right now one a week was, we're paying them yeah yeah and 
for right now, um, I, I'm just I, I believe for the uh, you know we it's not their fault that they're not working, um, you know we're having a hard enough time trying to find anybody to do it. <clears throat> that I I think it's fair to you know we're, we're kind of furloughing them anyways. It's the way we're looking at it. Um, I, I I believe we should keep paying at least those two for for the time being. Um, and obviously further on down the road here, we'll see uh, how much longer we want to do that. Um, you, did you, uh, talk to Mr. Corey? Um, cause Mr. Corey is still getting paid his, his full stipend. Correct. Correct. Right. Yeah. And, um, I, um, whether or not we can, um, I don't know if we should be talking about this. And, yeah. Let's uh, not get too far. So Michelle, yeah. let's, let's ask, let's ask Michelle, um, if so, uh, so I guess let's go back first. So to, to Kim, um, first of all, it's possible that, you know, just because we've authorized the Zoom meetings and we're going to talk more about meetings, um, the planning board, for example, you know, they meet the first and third. They're not going to be meeting until, you know, until possibly the third because we're mm -hmm. trying to get their agenda together and caught up on some things downstairs. And David, we'll, we'll talk, talk about that a little bit more. Um, the rec, you know, if some of these orders don't get lifted, they're not going to have a reason to meet. So I'm not That's sure, how, you know, just because we've opened it up, I'm not sure that you know, all of a sudden we're going to have all these meetings. Um, but I guess the question to Michelle would be is that, you know, let's just say that there are new employee does, you know, an average of two a week. Because um, really we want to get down to that two, maybe, you know, three tops. What can that APAT budget support? Because that's what it comes down to. <clears throat> the APAT budget can support paying five stipends a week for the rest of the fiscal year. Okay. So I if we- It's in pretty good shape. So. Does that include Dan too? Well, it's any five, yes. David, any five. Any five, any five. Okay. So, so it would be- one. So it would be, if we are paying those two people, um, it would be three actual meetings that um, we could afford to pay Dan for. And we have to remember at some point this is gonna light. And so we may have three for the first you know, couple of weeks and while we get through Warren and Finance. Um, so five is, you know, five is a comfortable number, but there's gonna get to a point that, you know, that this is gonna drop down to you know, one a week, if, you know what I mean? Right. One or two a week top, so. Um, if you know, if, if we can afford it, and that's the direction of the board, we'll continue to pay the two individuals. We don't use names. Uh, the one fifty dollars stipend that we've been giving them, and the new employee, you know, based on what that person is um, actually doing. Yeah, Kim, did you have a question? Yeah, I'm not a question. I just, you know, yeah. it, since we can afford it, since it's budgeted in, I would like to, you know, I, I do agree with David. Um, at, you know, just do the one meeting a week for them. Can we revisit this like at the first of June? You know, get through this month, and then we can revisit it and kind of see where we're at then. Sounds like a good plan. Okay. Yep. Okay. okay. You want that, Jen, with that? Yes, sir. Okay. What else do you have? Uh, <laughs> um, I'm just looking at my list, deciding, <laughs> deciding where you want to go next. Uh, so um, I just wanted more of a kind of an FYI. I'm going to be emailing you out uh, how I believe Article 43 left with the um, incorpor the incorporation of the agencies that we know that can help the residents uh, at no charge. We put those few changes in. Um, so I'm going to be emailing that out to you. And Kim did ask that we get it on next week's agenda. So uh, if you could look for that, um, we'll plan on trying to make some decisions and maybe at least get the application out there if we can get it approved in the next couple of weeks. Um, do you want me to send it to the road committee? To, do you want to wait until you guys finalize it and then we'll send it to them for input or how would you let me handle it? I'd wait till, yeah, I think, I think I'd wait till we finalize it. And then, yeah, I'd like to see it first and then, you know, go through it and then send it to them. All right. So that'll be on next week. Uh, just for clarification and the, the point of, you know, being a recorded meeting, um, well, I think it was Monday at the department head meeting, we talked about, um, or someone asked about article by article comparisons. And I just wanted to hear from the three of you that it was your understanding that we were doing this only for the town, correct? Not for the school? My understanding is just the town. The school, yeah. I mean, if the school wants it done, then, you know, that, that is, 
That well, be... was it was it you that asked? I mean, did you ask a selectman, or was it the member of the the chair of the Warren Finance? I don't recall who asked. No, I, I think I asked. Okay, okay. Well, then that's, uh, then that's it been Kim as well, but yeah, <laughs> I so think it would be a good thing to to have a comparison. So. And once, I... <clears throat> sorry, David. Dave. Oh, I, I, I was just going to reiterate on. I think what we were ta talking about last week was we were worried about people not knowing, you know, because we're we're condensing it. So we thought we'd be able to do some comparisons and this and that and send it out in the mail, right? Is that what we were talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I think I mean, we didn't get into a whole lot of detail. I just remember it was a direction. So I wanted to make sure. I mean, Michelle and I talked about it briefly, and it's certainly something that she can do without a problem. We're not going to start that until we get the warrant finalized first, and then we'll we'll give you something to look at. I just wanted to be sure that the direction was just the town budget, not the school. Right. No, my intention was just just the town budget. Got it. Okay. So um, next. <laughs> so after um, your meeting last Wednesday. Um, and you made the decision about the gym. Um, I received, I counted today, 13 different emails slash private messages about the equipment. Um, I replied to them as I understood it that, I mean, I didn't hear, uh, you know, closing the doors permanently, done, you know, finished. I, I guess I'm just, I'm looking for further direction. I mean, is it, what are you doing with the equipment? We haven't decided to shut it down permanently, no. So. In anything, I feel, ahead, I feel like we, I feel like we have enough time to make some decisions to try to get this, you know, to get it on the warrant. I mean, I, I do. I, I really wish we could just put it out to its people, you know, while we're doing our, our voting. I, I just, and let them decide, and then we can go from there. I mean. We try it for a year with, with I, we've got to get some numbers together, but I, I don't see why we can't get this done. Okay, so Dave. the direction of the board oh. last week was, I know. I know, was that, and I'm not trying to bring up the source, I'm just trying to figure out how I answer these people about the equipment. Are you giving back to the fire department? Is it to be determined? I mean, I thought it was kind it ain't, of left. It ain't going anywhere. It ain't going anywhere right now until we figure out exactly what we're going to do with it. And I think the last time right. we talked about it, I mean, my suggestion was, um, you know, and I understand where Kim's coming from. Uh, it would be great to be able to do that. I just, you know, my concern was that I wanted to see some numbers, something we could put forward to the town, you know, especially when right now we're trying to keep a flat line budget and, uh, you know, keep the uh, tax rate the same. But uh, knowing that, um, you know, without, you know, Rushing the process and making sure that we you know, we give every and give the people at the uh, um, gym a, a chance, a fair chance at this. Um, you know, get some numbers. We got to come up with some sort of plan. And I was thinking, you know, we're not going to be able to open up. Uh, I don't think realistically for at least three months, anyways. On um, you know, with all the restrictions and stuff and all that, I mean, I think we'd be out of our mind to do that. Um, that would give us time to, you know, uh, come come up with some sort of plan, some sort of budget. And um, and then at some point, um, you know, like I said before, I, I, I'm sure at some point we're going to end up having some sort of special town meeting for something to try to get back to normal here and, um, you know, and go there. Um, so I can't see the equipment equipment staying right where it is. Those are just locked for now. I mean, I, I thought that's what we agreed on. Yeah, we didn't really talk about the equipment, and, and I agree. I just, I mean, I got to bring it to you when I get that many, that many questions or comments about one thing. I mean, that's my job to bring it to you. What about, well, I, I know that we had talked a little bit last week. I mean, I know we're going to have to have a special town meeting. I just want to make sure that it is going to be on there. Um, and we had also talked a little bit about them having to, you know, prorate and send money back. Can we hold off until the special town meeting? I mean, that's a lot of work for, you know, the office girls to have to turn around and, and try to figure out everybody that has memberships. Is there any way to just kind of put it on hold unless somebody says, I want my money back? Um, I just would hate to make you go through all that work. Do those um, gym, does gym money roll over, Michelle? I mean, they've paid for the fiscal year. Right, so if we're paying them back, we need to pay them back before the end of June. Okay, so we appreciate oh, that, Kim, but when we well, to, keep the clean, to keep clean books, and that's what I was afraid of. Yeah, I, I was just, yeah, okay. All right. so, all right, so the answer, so I understand the answer clear. We didn't talk to equipment last time, so I'm just putting it out there, just right. so. 
my 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 belief on the equipment would be even if we do shut the gym down and the place is done we you know no longer have it the equipment would revert back to the fire department would be my thoughts that's where yeah. it started in the beginning so that's if we shut it down though right that's if, if yeah. it's shut down okay if, if we should was there ever if any, we shut was down there and we were done you know that would be okay we've lost uh, you there, may I? kim Oop. Um, yep i'm all set Oop. still there hello i'm here I'm yeah here. i'm here uh, who, who are you asking Oh, I don't go know. Ahead, Who's Dave. supposed to be talking here? Okay. You, go ahead. You. I, think, I think that was my connection. Something happened, so I'm back. Everything's okay. Um, I was just wondering, at any point in time, did the, did the fire department divert ownership over to any other entity other than themselves? As far as the equipment? Yeah. No. So it's that's... always been theirs, correct? Well, it was it before they became a town department. Yes, I mean it's their equipment. They were given. They they purchased yeah. it through a grant, yeah. and we. I didn't know all... if there was something where they reverted it to yeah. the, the the town hall or something like that. I didn't. I well, sure. I mean, they're a town department, so it becomes town equipment at this point. But yeah. the um, you know, and and we've had these conversations. You know, people have tried to find the grant and tried to find the fine print and set up. You know, wanted to know if it said any fine print in there, but. It, nobody has a copy of the grant at this point. We've gone back to the original. So right. it's a town department, it's town equipment, and you guys can talk about that when we get closer. Why don't you make a final decision? Yeah. I think Rick might have wanted to say something. Rick? I gotta unmute him. Go ahead. Hey. So I was just gonna go along with, with what Jennifer was saying is if that equipment if the gym closes and the equipment needs to be removed from the structure, the fire department would go through the equipment, uh, take what we could use still, given the space and what we have and what we think would be effective, and then the rest of the equipment would go out for sale or bid or anything, depending on where it falls, along with all of our regular ordinance stuff. Just like everything else, any other piece article. of town equipment, yep, it would go up for sale. Yep. Okay. Like the procedure, depending on its, its uh, value. assessed value. Yep. That sounds like plan. Okay, but for right now, we're not we're not selling or getting rid of anything. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, knowing that we're going to be, I mean, so we're, we know we're going to be zooming through May. Um, in June, depending on what happens, you know, depending on what the board decides. But in June, if we go up to fifty people, you may, you know, you have the option of going back to the town hall if you so choose. So we're only talking about a couple of weeks, but we do have the ability to. Um, run these zoom meetings live through facebook if the board uh, wanted to they are being uploaded currently to um to the apat and he's getting them on youtube uh, mike corey is getting them on youtube um but there is a you know there is a, the option of doing that okay there's no the, there's no we when we have our regular meetings we're live on cable those, right. aren't, those aren't live on youtube are they they're not live anywhere else no just, on, just cable. on cable okay yeah. Okay. So, well, I mean, it's an extra, it's an extra step. It's not, you know, it's not much, it's certainly not much work. Um, yeah. Is it really necessary for a couple of weeks? I mean, it's an option, but they can, if they can get on Facebook, they could, you know, should be able to get on here as well, but it is something, you know, if you wanted to. Okay. But, yep. So we, we can't, so the only way we could go live with this is through like Facebook or YouTube. You can't go live, right? Right. YouTube's our videos, right? I, I mean, it would be, I, after the last meeting, and some of the posts that were on Facebook. Um, it would be nice if it was live so people could actually see it. Um, well, the I'm only other piece, on the other piece yeah. about that, remember our first meeting where, you know, we had our um, our APAT directly, director had to mute out, you know, some vulgarities. Yeah. So that's the only thing, you know, yeah. you, yes, you'd see it on here, but at least if it's, you know, if it's not running live, then you yeah. have a second to mute it if necessary. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, I understand that. I mean, just the uh, thought. Just the problem, problem yeah. we had was, I mean, um, of course, you know, social media is what it is, but the way some of it was portrayed at, people would have to wait to go see the meeting and it actually happened. 
and to be able to see exactly what happened at the time, it would have been nice if we could do it live, but it is. And it you is. can, I mean, you can, it's certainly your choice. You certainly can. So something to think about. I mean, it, I guess it's going to depend on, I mean, if we're talking about two more weeks in May, then, you know, it, I mean, I don't even know what the board's thinking. If, if things stay the same, you know, in the CDC and things stay the same, are we going to go back to regular meetings in June since we can go up to 50? So I guess, you know, that, we can kind of tie the two of those conversations together when you decide what direction we'll you're to, heading in. We'll have to watch and see how everything is going, you know, right in, in the world. So okay. right now, this is a very safe way of doing it. <laughs> right. Oh, I didn't have it on. Uh, let's see. Yeah. How do you feel about renting the town hall in June and July? Renting it? Uh, the, the space that you rent out normally for birthday parties. Uh, little yeah, thing you things. still do that? Well, I mean, you, you know, you can have, you've got some things, we'll put out both sides. Um, in June and July, we know that you can have 50 people together. So, you know, there will be the stipulation that it has to be 50 in there, you know, less than 50 to meet the governor's orders. Um, you know, the flip side of that is, is you've still got staff going in there, you know, and cleaning, you know, the, the you know, how well is it gonna be able to be cleaned? Are we gonna be required to bring somebody else in, you know, above and beyond? Yeah, I'm, I'm not all got, that, I'm not all that excited about it. We've got road uh, private roads that want to meet there, have their meetings there. I've gotten a call about a birthday party. Um, so they're just trying to book in June and July, and I need yeah. some direction. Yeah. Could we ask them to uh, clean if they're going to use our hall when they're done? And I don't mean just pick up, but I mean clean. They would have to, you know. Just like I don't know. I don't know what anybody feels feels about that. Um, yeah, Dave, what's your know. thoughts? I I kind of think it's a bad idea. Um, I mean, if we if you know, like Jen says, the cleaning aspect of it, who's going to monitor if they actually have you know, say um, you know, say a uh, birthday party, they got 50 people and 51 shows up. Who's kicking who out? Who's gonna mm -hmm. you know? Who's gonna? That's make, true. You know, you know, push the, you know, make sure they don't push the envelope. And then at the end of it, you know, even if we did have them clean, you know, some people's clean is a lot different than other people's cleaning, you know, and, yeah. uh, and then it would be more burden on us right now. And I just don't think it would look good on our part. Like my main concern would be the fact that the girls have to go in after afterwards too. you know, yeah. everybody that works in the town hall. Yeah. So. I don't, I don't think it's such a great idea right now with everything going on and with everything else being canceled. So. Maybe revisit it in July or something. Yeah. You know, get through the next two months. So don't book it for May or June. And we'll talk about it at the end of June. I wouldn't even book it for July. Okay. You guys are all on the same page. Not June or July at this point. Dave? That's fine. Kim? Yeah, I'm on the same page. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, Next, I wanted to um, talk to you about the paving bid. Um, sorry, I have people trying to trying to get the meeting, so I'm sending the meeting number if you're wondering what I'm doing. Um, so, the paving bid. The road commissioners reached out to me and wanted to wanted me to send the last year so they could take a quick look at it. Um, I'm going to read it to you if I can get it in my email because it was after packets together. Uh, all right, so last year it said, um, so sealed bids for paving roads in the town of Acton with hot uh, materials are now being requested. Proposed pricing must be valid through, uh, we'd put 1231, uh, we'd put 1231 of 2020, presumably. All Ooh. paving bids received must be, must include separate prices for per ton laid handwork per ton, curbing per ton, reclaiming per square foot. Bid shall be submitted in sealed envelopes. Uh, the rest is, um, is standard. Um, they were fine with last year, so I told them I would bring it back before the board. Um, so, it, thoughts? Jim? I, I don't see a problem with it. I mean, we did well with it last year. I don't think things have really changed much in the last few years. Dave? So when was the end date on the uh, the uh, bid? When was it supposed to be good for? Until when? December 31st of 2019 is the prior bid. 
Okay, so when Scott and I, we had an issue with that one, one year because our bid ran out, say January 1st. Problem is our fiscal year ran into the next year. So um, the unfortunate part is if they don't get their paving done this summer and the, the bid is no good after uh, December 31st and then they still have June, July, June and July to pave, the bid's no good for those that point. Uh, I would suggest that they would do it to, for our fiscal year if they can. So you want me to see if they're open to the bid being good through June 30th of um, 2021? Sounds good. I, I, because theoretically, part, part of your fiscal year, you're not even, your bid's not even good. That makes sense. Yeah. All right, so it's um, assuming they're okay with that, I'm all set to release this in the next uh, couple of days. Yes. Yep. Yep. You, David? You know, Dave's nodding his yep. head, yes. <laughs> Trying to take notes Trying at the same time. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. All right, that's it for me for now. Okay. Oh, no, I'm done. No, it's not. Real quick. Um, so I talked to the superintendent of the transfer station today. Uh, he wanted to let you know that um, he is working on um, some ideas that he has in regards to opening up the recycling. He is working on getting some information together that he wants to be able to hand out uh, to the residents and property owners. Uh, he's gonna put that together over the next couple of days. We'll pretty it up and we'll have a draft for you next week. There's some, some minor changes. Uh, he mentioned to me glass today. It was one of the changes that um, as far as how it's recycled and what we're paying for it. Um, so he's he's got a list of some minor changes he wants to run by you. So I've asked him to put it together. We'll present it to you next week and then he'll start probably handing it out next week. But um, he is also trying to kind of sneak in a little recycling and coming in, you know, coming up with a, a good way socially distancing to, to get that open a little bit, but not allow people inside. So okay. he's working on it. Sounds good. He, he, wanted to, he wanted to call you today, David. I don't know if he did. Um, and Ed, he wanted to reach out to you because your background, he had a couple of questions about Rollinsford. So sure. if you have time, give him a call. Okay. Yep. 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 Some of that is loosening up some around the uh, around the states. So okay. okay. Anything else? Okay. Uh, warrants and bills. I've been in and signed last night. Uh, Kim and Dave. I did too. Okay. I'm going in tonight. Okay. Great. They're not there. What? <laughs> They're not there. Oh, they're not there. They're not there. No. Well, I guess I won't be signing them tonight. Nope. <laughs> they're not. Where are they? You already took them back. Yep. <laughs> I thought they were there when I picked up my packet today, tonight. No, there's a there's an appointment to sign there. Oh, oh, that I didn't see. <laughs> okay. Um, David, tomorrow the office is open from uh, from three to seven, three to eight, so. What's that? The office is open tomorrow evening, so we'll grab them yep. and put them back out. She probably just had to do the okay. paperwork piece of it. Okay. Sorry. Michelle, Michelle, do we all need to um, sign the appointment? Well, that's going to be that's that's <laughs> that's okay. That's on, fine. The, it's on the agenda. It's, it's on all the right. agenda. I was just trying to find a safe place because, oh. assuming you make a motion a little later, I can't. Obviously, I can't okay. slide it to you. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, it's on a new you're business. Fade, Jen, you're fading in and out a little bit, but it's still, you're still audible, so. Okay, approval of the agenda. I make a motion to approve the agenda. I'll second that. Move and a second to approve the agenda. Any further discussion? Call for a vote. I'll do it roll call style. Uh, Kim, how do you vote? Yes. David? Yep. Yeah, votes yes. Okay. Okay. Minutes of the last meeting. We got February 26th and we have April 29th. I have, uh, I can uh, make a motion to approve the minutes for April 29th. I went through those and those all look good. Okay. Uh, I'll second that. Okay. Moved and seconded to approve April 29th minutes. 
Any further discussion? Call for a vote, Kim? Yes. David? Yes. Did you have a vote? Yes. Uh, no. Do you want to table the other one? And what yeah. was that? Did you say February? What was February it? February 26th. Six. All right. I'll get that done this week. Okay. So we'll table February 26th. Okay. Okay. Um, department heads and committee chairs. Uh, I know we have one department head. Is that where the chief would like to speak? Well, Matt, can I before he does? Sure. So, I mean, Rick is here because, I mean, Rick's really here as a member of the public and because we've got something under an appointment. I just want to make sure it's clear that we didn't, departments have asked and I'm not, you know, right. we're not. We haven't, just, we, haven't so opened, just, we haven't really opened it up yet. Okay. So, okay. So I just want to make sure no one thinks that we're picking Rick out. He just right. happens to be okay. here. And... Yep. Um... Sorry, Rick. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have anything prepared. Good. But, um, good. 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 Okay. good. <laughs> Things uh, are good. The fire department's doing good. Everything's doing well. Uh, no major changes on the EMA front. Everything looks good. Town's staying okay. healthy, which is what we want to see. There we go. That's the best news. So thank you. <coughs> Maybe next week we can. Well, next week we still got to be heavy with the warrants, I think. Uh, at some point, we probably should open it up to department heads, committee chairs again. But maybe I not. think we want... talked about that last week, didn't we? Yeah, I think we did. Do you want to ask? A couple weeks from now. Do you want to ask? Um... I would say we put them on as needed if they have something. Okay. Yeah, let's do it so that way. If anybody, so we'll send a memo, we'll send an email out to all of them. So if any of them want to speak or have an update, we'll have them reach out and we'll put so many on a week based on what else we have going on. Sure. That sounds okay. okay. Yep, it sounds good. It, I mean, we haven't heard from anybody in months, so it'll be nice to kind of get back in the swing. So, okay, old business. We have warrant. All right. So Michelle is going to do her magic and share the screen. So as she's doing this, let's just kind of a couple of things that, that we want to talk about before we get um, too far into this. The, the first thing is zoning. Can everybody see that? Yep. All right. So, first of all, you know, for anybody, I know that I'm guessing the public can see this at home. Um, this is not by any means a, a finished document. Uh, there, Michelle and I have lots of notes to one another in there and highlighted sections. So, there's nothing, you know what I mean? It, it's very preliminary. Um, the sections that at the top, we are waiting for legal as far as whether the preamble has to be um, changed because it's all by secret ballot. So we know it's similar to an actual warrant, um, a secret ballot order that you have to sign. So we're working those details out with legal. So the highlighted is probably going to change. Um, we do have, so articles five through, I believe 22 or 23 are all school related. So uh, we, the superintendent is aware that we are changing the we had to change the wording a little bit so instead of saying to see what sum the town will authorize we need to put the number actually in the article so that it can be answered as a yes or no so it's to see if the town will authorize and we're putting the amount of the school committee's request in there so it's yes or no so we're not going to go through any of the school warrants tonight the school articles tonight because you you know in the past you've never made recommendations on those um I don't want to mix up the public comment and, and the zoning, but I, I want to put it together. Um, I have gotten probably four different emails asking you specifically to table zoning until you can have an open town meeting. Um, before any of those emails even came in, Michelle and I had a conversation, um, I'm going to say maybe Tuesday or Wednesday, when we started talking about, in the past, Acton has been very proactive on their zoning in the sense that we put the entire zoning article on the warrant. And we do that so that in 10 years, somebody can find a town report book and they don't have to count on an attested copy from you know, codes or the clerk or somebody. So it's, it's a great idea that, that we do it that way. But when we are switching to a secret ballot, when they sent the zoning questions up, the very first one that Michelle and I opened, I think was five pages, five or six pages. So when you think about a secret ballot, that, that's huge. So we went directly to code enforcement. Um, and uh, Ken ha said he didn't have any concerns with us taking the zoning off. Uh, he would be hopeful that I was pointing this out, that it would be addressed by the end of the year. I think so that with makes that, perfectly good sense. Okay. 
David, Kim? I agree. I was getting to that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a sip. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, Dave and Kim, you all, you okay with that? So. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, I, I believe probably this might work in our favor, giving us a reason to have a special town meeting at some point. Mm -hmm. Might build a bunch of with something else, but at the end of the day, the zoning, the problem with, with the zoning by doing it the way we're doing it right now is exactly what people are talking about. You know, people got questions about it. They got to have some answers. Right. And uh, right. we don't need people voting on something there that they don't know what they're voting on. Yep. So if we have a special town meeting at some point, we'll just clump in some other stuff with it, make it worthwhile. Yep. That's a good idea. Okay. Michelle, can you bring us to page four or five? We're looking to pick up on article 23, I guess, which is the bottom of four. Page four is the. Uh, you say 23? Yeah. Article 23. Yep. Okay. Cool. Oh, there we go. Don't get dizzy. <laughs> All right, so we're not going to, because you're not making, we're not making recommendations on them tonight. This is really homework and just going through them because we're really hoping that, that you can make recommendations next week. Um, 23 other than the year changing has no change in it whatsoever so 23 is good um 24 and 25 have no changes those are housekeeping from last year same thing with uh 27 no change 28 i'm going to have michelle read you she has um you can see how the numbers jump from 28 to 32 this is Michelle and I combining a couple of articles together. So she's going to read that so we can listen to how it flows. To see if the town will vote to have real estate and personal property taxes first payment come due on October 15th, 2020, and the second payment on April 15th, 2021. Interest to be charged at 9% on all taxes paid after October 15th and April 15th, and interest on abated taxes to be paid by the town at 5% pursuant to 36 MRSA 506A, and to authorize the tax collector to accept the prepayment of taxes before commitment, before the tax commitment with no interest. So this combined, this is a combination of one, two, three, four articles. So your due dates, your interest, your prepayments, and your abatement is all in one. Right. Listening to her read it, I'd like to somehow get rid of a couple of those ands, and her and I can kind of sort that out. But these are really all housekeeping articles, all about the collection of taxes. How do you feel about them being combined? I I don't have any issue, Kim. No, I think it sounds sounds good. Yep, David. Love it. Okay. okay. Just a question for for us though: the nine percent interest. That's something that we set, I believe. Uh, no, that this well, I mean, we set the state sets sets the maximum, and we've always used the maximum. Um, okay. The maximum this year is nine percent. Um, what are we charging this year, Michelle? Is it? Uh, I think it's seven. It's either seven. nine or eight. Is it? Yeah. So they could go lower if they wanted. They could. My. And the the, the abatement. Um, the percentage on the abatement can't be, um, can't be less than 4% less than what we pay on the penalty. Can we go down a percentage? Yeah, so if our maximum is nine, the lowest we can go on, on the abatement part when we pay back is 5%. Will we go up to 9% on abatements as well? Um, historically we've we've gone with the lowest amount and it was not it was nine percent last this current year it's nine percent yeah that we're charging my only thought is and here's just a thought i don't know how people are going to be as far as trying to get their taxes paid we we can't give a break on taxes it's what it is could we adjust that number down a little bit instead of nine percent drop that some or is it not worth even thinking about i don't know i'm just throwing it out 
We could certainly change that, but that is part of our budget of revenues. Okay. Okay. Probably just as well. I, as well. Um, yeah, because the problem is, is you have, uh, I know in the past, you have some people who own lots and lots of property who have lots and lots of money. And if the interest, if the interest on your uh, taxes as well, they end up uh, keeping their money in the bank as long as they can and not paying their taxes. So um, that gives them more reason to do it. Okay. Nope, just a, just a thought, so, okay. All um, right, so that's that one. Uh, 32 is untouched from last year. 33, um, we'll have Michelle read it. 33 is um, one that we think that can be pulled out altogether until a special town meeting. Uh, to see if the town will vote to appropriate all funds received from the state from snowmobile registration revenue to the local snowmobile clubs for maintaining their snowmobile trails on condition that those trails are to be open to the public for outdoor recreation purposes at no charge. So our thought on, on tabling this is we're not getting those revenues don't come in until January. It's one less question on what will be a lengthy ballot. Uh, I'm fine with it. I am too. I think it's a good idea. We're going to have to have that special town meeting. So, yep. yeah, I believe we will. David? Yeah, I mean, uh, at the same time, too, I um, that that's always been an article question that's made me wonder a little bit. And um, I like to have the uh, local snowmobile club give us a list of uh, trails that they actually take care of. Good idea. Okay. Remind me in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> Make it out. Thanks. All yeah. right. Um, all right. So 35 is, is not changed from last year um, either. You'll see that she's got highlighted down there for information purposes only. Um, and, and we're going to kind of skip this conversation because I don't have a, a real clear answer yet. But one of the conversations that, that Michelle and I had um, in regards to the actual ballot and the advice we're waiting for from attorneys is what actually has to be put on there and or you know can we do a supplement book to go along with it um the grayed out area is something that could come off if we end up having to you know putting this whole article 35 needs to go on there clearly um but the highlighted section really could come off because it's just information you don't have to decide to hear what exactly we have to have on there and what we can do with supplemental information and we'll come back to you next week with a recommendation okay okay uh, did you skip 34 or did i miss that uh no 34 was the same yeah we, okay. we i did say no. something yeah. okay all right will, so uh, on the subject of 34 since we're there um i sat through the fema briefing on tuesday um, we're looking at 90% reimbursement rate on um, COVID-related uh, expenses. Um, so it, it's important that that any department that's making those purchases that um, that they make sure they let me know that those were COVID-related purchases because sometimes invoices aren't clear exactly what they are. Would that be uh, masks, gowns? um for five face shields so it's it's things that weren't previously budgeted for so if the fire department had to purchase extra um than they normally would have then yes but if it's just their typical purchases then no but the the masks at town hall that we're we're handing out are we've never required people to wear masks before so those are certainly um okay an approved expense yeah do they have a uh, minimum we have to meet before we get reimbursed thirty three hundred dollars we've already met it yeah okay. Okay. <laughs> about, about that i think we yeah. met that in sanitizer and uh masks yeah 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 all right we good okay yep thanks all right all right so 36 37 um are are the same the years are different there uh, 38, these are our overdrafts from last year. Yep. Michelle, how do those, that's not my dog, I swear. How, no, do, those numbers, <laughs> how do those numbers compare, Michelle, the overdrafts to prior years? 
Um, it's certainly lower than, than last year. Uh, of course, I don't have all of that information here at home, but, um, but yes, it's lower than last okay. year. Okay. And that, I mean, that's a mandated article, so that's <laughs> gotta stay, so. Yeah. And well, um, well, well within the 15% overage? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. All right. Um, 39 is, 39, some of that is grayed out because again, we're trying to figure out um, what the ballot question has to say. You know, can it say, you know, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate X amount for general government for wages, operational costs, and employee benefits, question mark. Or does it, you know, do each one need to be listed out? So th these are just pending questions we're trying to get answers to. Okay. Um, but those are all, um, yeah, those are, those are flat line. Well, I say they're flat line, but they general are. Government um, is, general government is down. It is. Yeah. Good. Too bad we can't put that on the Warren article. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, 40. We don't, we didn't include, we didn't, there was nothing to come. We're only going through these really for combination purposes. So, um, 40 is not much we can do about. All right, so 41, um, same thing. That's the, that's the fire department. Um, the, it's grayed because we're trying to figure out if we have to separate that on a ballot. So that's to be determined. Uh, 42 is the uh, payment. Michelle, you want to talk a little bit about that? Uh, sure. So uh, based on the uh, original number that I was given from the chief of a, four, a maximum of $400,000 purchase, um, this takes the, what is currently in the fire department capital vehicle fund, I think is what we call it now, um, takes that $69,000, puts it towards the 40, uh, towards the 400,000, gives us a loan of almost 331 for five years. Uh, I talked to the bank on Friday and she said, estimate your high at 4%. On the interest, and this would, this would the forty thousand dollars would be approximately six months in payments because I, after everything is approved, we have to go out to bid. Um, there's usually some paperwork time there for the bank and legal, so I'm assuming that the maximum we would have is six months of payments out of this current fiscal year. Um, and attached uh, legally, we're required to have the financial financial state statement. Um, with any bond issues. Okay. And we did take out the word, Ed, based on the conversation that, that we had, um, and, and I know the board is gonna meet with the, with the fire chief and talk more detail about this before you vote, but we did take the word new out of there. Uh, the word new was in front of tanker so that if you guys end up talking about spec trucks or whatever direction you know you all feel, if it's passed is the best direction, you can have that conversation down the road. Okay. All right. Uh, yep. Yeah, and that was that was from a conversation I'd had with the chief at one point in time, um, talking about buying either if there was a good truck that was out there, a spec truck that was already built, or uh, a demo, something like that. So, you know, maybe used, it maybe slightly used, but not probably not used. But you know, you know what I'm saying? Not not a not a custom built truck per se. You know, he's he said that if he finds a good, you know, a good truck out there that suits the bill, uh, not necessarily a used truck, but you know, you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, just that they had that like, a little bit. So like a walking. demo. Yeah. Like a yeah. demo. Like they yeah, do a the demo truck you know. could be, uh, you could have, you know, a couple thousand miles on it. Still basically yeah. be new, but it was, you know, so, okay. Move on. All right. There, Michelle, is that correct? Um, there's a slight increase in animal control because of uh, the pre the current unbudgeted phone. Um, oh, right. And that, communications has uh, uh, dispatch has a little bit of an increase there, but other than that, no salary increases or anything. All right. No. Um, 44. We're just going to skip on right by. <laughs> we're just going to pen is not there. 
So uh, 44, we're skipping just, just for the public's point because the Board of Selectmen have a, uh, a Zoom meeting scheduled for Friday with the road commissioners uh, right before the COVID hit. We were in the middle of communications with them in regards to continuing to treat them as employees or switching them over to uh, independent contractors. So all of these numbers on Article 43 are going to depend on what you guys make, a, what final decision you make. So. Yeah. Skipping that gives you the chance to have that meeting on Friday, if that's okay. Yep. That's fine. All right. Uh, Article 45, uh, the increase here is based on uh, the presentation that you got last week from, from Michelle, uh, giving them, what is it, 90-ish thousand more in paving, Michelle? Uh, it's giving them $51,000. Right. So, yeah. A piece, right? Yes. How much paving? It, it's giving them an additional 51,000. Oh, okay, additional 51,000. So what does that yes. bring the total paving to? 150. 150, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Per Are the other lines somewhat flatlined? The other lines are flatlined. Okay. Um, 46 is a transfer station. There's really, I mean, there's nothing to combine that with. Um, 47 is the uh, conservation forestry and 48 is the uh, planning and development. Um, we had talked about combining those two possibly, but decided that uh, they were really different departments and, and um, decided not to do that. Okay. Cemetery is 49, uh, 50. 50 is your social services. So this one you guys really want to have some conversations with and you you know I don't know, know at what point we want to bring Warnham Finance in on this um, so here you will not find the two new ones we completely remove those all together and the two that were that were not funded last year which was the main visiting health, uh, main health visiting nurse and the Saco River Corridor we did put last year's amount requested in there so and, and none of these other ones are, there is what, was there any increases, Michelle, other than one? Um, I, d I flatlined them all. Okay, so they, they might have came in with a request, but you brought them yes. down to, okay. Yes. Okay. So, you know, this, I mean, 70, you know, you're at $73,000 worth of donations. So right. that's flatlined from last year based on what was requested last year and, and the two new ones if you, um, Michelle, I think you told them which organizations they were last. Do you remember which ones they were? The new ones? Yeah. Um, was, uh, Wasn't it a television? It was uh, Main Public, Public TV, yeah. and the other one was... Um, was it a shelter? Yeah, it's a shelter out of Lewiston. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, it was up north somewhere. But they indicated they had one act in residence just for clarity, right? Yeah, yeah correct. Okay. So, the board needs to tell us if you want those two new ones on there. This is just how we've presented it. I mean, obviously, Michelle and I are not active residents, so we're just presenting you. You tell us what you want. And then where we, do these numbers look for you? How do these numbers look to you? I don't really want to add any new ones this year. Um, I'd like to just stay with what we've got. And David, you anybody like else? <clears throat> Well, um, yeah, um, the one you were just talking about, the one in Lewiston, is that what the one you were just talking about, uh, Jen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, we can't be donating all the way across wherever just because one person I'm showing. I like to keep it local if possible, at least know where the money's going. Um, I mean, if this is what we had last year, um, I guess, you know, it looks good to me, I guess. So main main health visiting nurses and Saco River Corridor we didn't have last year, correct? Well, it didn't oh, we get didn't, approved. Yeah, didn't okay. get approved. Okay. Yeah, I think Saco River Corridor. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that one. But... How much is it? Three hundred dollars. Yeah. And I think and the is... life flight one was a big contentious thing, but that that ended up passing. That was, wasn't right. that a big deal last year at town meeting? Yeah, there was a talk about it, but I mean, we yeah. typically typically we use Life Flight, you know, at least yeah. once a year in this town. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and remember, it helps offset people who don't have insurance. Insurance. 
Remember, yeah. we've combined these. So if you if you feel like there are some that will have support and some that won't, I mean, you you know, it's we've combined them as a recommendation, but you certainly don't have to take that. So you know, we could break them all out individually. I mean, but you're looking at what two, four, six, yeah. eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, <laughs> like twenty-two yeah. more articles. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you I, could. I, if Maine Health visiting nurses didn't get approved last year, and Saco River didn't get approved, we probably could pull those two out. I mean, it's, 13, yeah. it's only thirteen hundred dollars, but thirteen hundred dollars is thirteen hundred. So. Right. I, I agree with that, and I, I, I also think is the finance committee is not going to get this until we approve this, correct? Right. Well, yeah, you're going to tell us what you want on the warrant, um, and because I, I think this would be something that you know maybe the uh, finance committee could uh, take a hack at too, you know, and see what they thought. I mean. The problem is, we, I'd hate to see something on there and have the whole thing voted down because of one line. It, exactly, I agree. You could, I mean, you could break it up into, you know, it, you could put your water ones together. You could put your, uh, in, and again, I'm not an action resident, but I mean, the visiting nurses, I mean, as much as we deal with, with elderly, I would, you know, that one worries me. But, um, I mean, we could break it down into two or three articles. I'm, try, I'm trying to remember why. We didn't do the visiting nurses last year. Why did it got voted down? I guess I, think, I just don't remember. I think it was redundancy. Um, Cornerstone visiting nurses, um, they were a new request last year and they, they have serviced uh, quite a few active residents. And I, okay. I think uh, Maine visiting nurses, uh, they charge for their services. That's what it so, was, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So maybe. I mean, you could take, you know, your visiting nurses your, you know, you could put your, like your Acton Chapel Youth Corps, your Acton Wakefield Watershed, you know, you could group them into two or three and put them in similar, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we have, uh, you know, like associations could be, could be a group, so. But are we trying to keep this thing condensed? But yeah, but I mean, one of you, I, I, whoever said that made the point, I think it was David, that, I mean, you know, you don't want to take a chance of all of them failing. Right. True. You know, and most people yeah. will either you know, they'll either completely support the water ones or they won't. Right. You know what I mean? Um, let Michelle and I look at that tomorrow and see yeah. kind of what that looks like. Yeah, because either way, you, either way you do it, it's kind of dangerous because if you put all the water ones together and just say, you know, I was looking at the Balsh Lake Crewman Association. You know, um, we, you know, we weren't through Article 43. We weren't even allowed to give them money for doing improvements on the lake, but we're giving them through this. You know, and somebody saw that and go, "Oh, wow! I'm I don't want Bullshit Lake, so that means all the other ones can get screwed too." Um, I don't know. You're almost just as well off. I, I don't believe with the, the Soccer River Corridor. If that didn't go through last year, I don't think we should have it on there this year. And what was the other one? Uh, visiting nurses. Main health. Um, visiting health. Nurses. Yeah. 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 Because there I are other just, agencies. We, I think I would I take both of those off to begin with. Sure. Yeah, and and, and well, my suggestion would be uh, roll with what you've got. If it passed last year, um, I'm assuming that um, it'll it'll pass this year. All right. So we're taking those two off and leaving it as one lump article, or do you want them individual? I want one lump. Yeah. Leave it yeah. one lump. Yeah. 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 I mean, Sounds good. Okay. Uh, 51 is the um, the dams. Are there increases there, Michelle? Um, there's a little increase on the um, the annual maintenance, but other than that, no. And that's that was a proposed budget that I saw from Sanford three or four months ago. I haven't seen anything that's been approved yet. Yeah, we, they haven't had a meeting in a while, so. They don't have to to make decisions. Yeah, I know. You haven't seen anything from the Shapley side, have you, Jen? No, nothing, nothing I'm going to speak about on camera. No, well, yeah, I mean, nothing. You haven't seen no, anything. It's, been, any it's been interesting, but no, no, we haven't. Okay. I, uh, I'd like to see uh, some sort of layout of the uh, annual maintenance and cost and what it entails, where our money's going. Do we, uh, we able to get that anyways? Um, yeah, we- Request it. 
Yeah. I think it would be something good for the finance committee to have the fingers on too. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Uh, 52 and 53 um, were combined. So uh, Michelle, why don't you go ahead and read that and see how it sounds. To see if the town will raise $11,120 and appropriate $45,583 with $34,463 to come from FY21 franchise fee revenues for operation of the Acton Public Access Television, also known as APAT, and to carry over any unused funds to, should be to Ann, to an APAT capital equipment fund. So this was two articles. We have one normally that we um, we appropriate the funds, the franchise revenue, and then we had the uh, special equipment piece that he needed. Um, remember, he had originally asked for two. We cut one out and left one in. Um, we decided to combine it into two because, you know, it, you hate. We really don't want to see the the channel be passed to continue to run, but not support the equipment because he's not going to be able to do that without the equipment. So by putting them together. Um, you know, they either, they either support it or they don't, that's, you know, that'll be their choice, but to keep it running, he's got to be able to upgrade. Okay, yep. Right. So that was combined. Um, so number 54 work two. Okay. So 54, 55 and 56, we never actually combined them, did we, Michelle? We talked about it. Right. Well, so, the rec was going to discuss it. Jonathan yeah. didn't. Yeah. So the um, so we we started looking at these last couple and the rec um, like Michelle said the rec's going to have them they're going to have a meeting and they're going to talk about these couple these couple but we wanted to get your input um, on it first when when we looked at Article 54 the key words in the second sentence says with 50 you know so you're raising X amount you're appropriating X amount but then you're expecting 5600 from anticipated revenues and that's going to be soccer and basketball a big portion of that so not knowing what that's going to be um we reached out to jonathan and just said you know how do you feel about raising you know uh, raising it and how do we word that michelle we were going to raise it but uh, we were going to raise it all and all, but all the funds would go back in right right we're, we're, we're worried that an article will pass saying that they'll have X amount from revenues and then they won't get the revenues. Right, because if they right. can't get together and have, you know, have, the, have the games and whatnot, then right. you know, there's no revenue. Yeah, that's gonna take a little bit of thinking. Uh, the next one is um, $2,000 added, that's out of their improvement for field and parking and they were gonna take another look at that. Um, okay. Then the fundraising article. So we're gonna we're gonna encourage them to hold a meeting over the you know with it soon so they can talk about those articles um they haven't met since their chair resigned so they you know they've got to kind of come together and, and figure it out um what they want to so, do so so right now what we have for numbers right now to appropriate raise and appropriate um the total total amount right now of course you got the 5600 anticipated revenues um if what Michelle, with the number that they have in here, this is already set into that 12, um, 12 cents. 12.05. Correct. 12.05. That's already, so you've set that already there. So yeah. So at the end of the day, if we <clears throat> go through and we don't even, I'm just trying to think, if we put it through, it, it rolls over anyways, or it'll end up going back in the undesignated fund. But well, we wouldn't want to have to go back to a special town meeting at some other point if they don't have the funds, correct? Right. Um, I'm just trying to, I've got so many papers here. I'm trying to find out. If we just see. put the budget through the way it is right now and say it gets voted and it's not going to affect our tax rate, the money is going to be appropriated. Yeah, that, that $5,600 $5, really isn't going to touch your tax rate. So yeah, if we raise an right. So if we raise and appropriate the full amount and just take all revenues outside of fundraising, because that's separate, um, take all revenues, that's not going to affect the tax rate. That's what you're saying. Right. Do you think that's safer, Michelle, not knowing 
because if they don't come up with that 5,600, that means that they can't spend the 23,972, right? Well, yeah, and and that would kind of negate Article uh, 56 because the fundraising revenues um, exceed the budgeted amount. There wouldn't be a budgeted amount, so that would negate that article altogether. So if they fundraised money, then they couldn't spend it. Okay. So we'll, well, I wonder what kind of fundraising, you know, if there's really no seasons, you know what I mean? Well, I mean hopefully well, things will mean, change. If they're not going to say they don't have a baseball and basketball season, they're not going to be putting those funds in. They probably don't even need the funds to do it anyways because they're not going to be able to do it. Fundraise. So, but I was just trying to think of a way we could word this, this article so, you know, and condense it to a point where they, they're just in case maybe the lift comes up, everything starts going forward. You know, they have some funds to work with. Um, I'm well, not sure just, how we... Uh, just leave the sentence the way it is, just to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the 23,000. Yep. The, right, the 23,972. That's essentially the full amount they're looking for, right, Michelle? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Which is actually a little less than this year's budget. So we could just take the rest of it out and... Yeah. Um, just leave it a flat money budget. Yeah. That way, if they don't get the anticipated revenues, and like Michelle said, whether they get that 56 or don't, it's not going to affect the tax rate. I mean, okay. we, you know, but well, let's ask them well, and mean, we'll they, come back to you. They, they have to come to us anyways, any, any big expenditures anyway, so it's not like, um, you know, we wouldn't be looking over it anyways. So, but it'd be nice just to make sure that there is a budget there just in case. Okay. All right, so we'll come back to those three rec ones. Anything else on those, Michelle? Uh, no. Rec, okay. Uh, and then the last one, um, the last one is the force management plan. Now, from the committee meeting on Monday, um, what I thought I heard was that we would be all set to pull this one off. I would think we could, yes. Until an open, until a town meeting? Yeah. Because this is another one that, A, we have to get through the committee uh, outstanding issues that we have. B, this one's going to have some conversation to it. Um, well, uh, and, being the um, liaison to the um, forest uh, conservation there, um, what this article is supposed to do is just accept the plan, not to implement, just to accept it. So our forester made the plan up. This is just voting to say, this is a this is a route we want to start with. I think this is to enact. So this would this be for enact, enact. Yeah, to what? Wait, it says an act. So we would put that That's force management plan into place is is what it's saying, right? So it would be starting up. Yeah. So if it said anything about harvesting or anything like that, it would it would. We, when we were forward with that, when we when we had the meeting, when we vote when the, when they voted on it, it was to accept the plan, it wasn't to enact the plan because the problem was what the issue was was they didn't want to enact on it, meaning go forward with it, actually do the project until there was some um, public meetings and this and that, and there was some issues, so we decided to get rid of you know to move forward with it and just accept the plan. So I, I guess I'm confused there. But more of the reason to take it off until the committee can get together and make sure we've got the wording right. Um, the committee chair didn't seem to have any concerns. I can double check or we can ask the whole committee as a whole, but want to save it for an open town meeting? I'd prefer I to think so. It. Yeah. I mean, worst case scenario with a thing, the trees get another year older. You know, it's really not. <laughs> I don't think there's anything in there that's detrimental to the, you know, to the, to what we have. Right. So. All right. Yeah. So just to recap, Michelle and I will make those few changes. We'll deal with the roads is a big thing going to be on Friday. I'm going to reach out to the rec and see if I can get them to have a meeting Monday or Tuesday. Um, just so they can kind of, you know, maybe by next week, we can, you can start making some recommendations on this. Sounds good. Yep. Okay, I forget anything on, on the warrant, Michelle? Uh, uh, I guess I had a question in regards to um, 
current finance committee recommendations typically if they don't agree with the article as written they they put a lower amount um that that really would be kind of um it wouldn't be beneficial to say you know i need that the board the committee recommends a lesser amount because the people can't vote on it so are they are they being instructed to vote ought not to pass or approve as written and not have any adjustments on the recommendations that that probably would be the better way for them to to do it because like you say they can't if, you know if they said if one of the articles said you know a thousand dollars you know for whatever it may be and they recommend 500 you can't you can't vote on the 500 right you know, the article sits at a sits at a thousand so right and do you that's uh, the same problem with the uh when we were just back there talking about the um services there the um donations same idea you know they can't pull one out and recommend doing this and that so that really ought not to pass or you know or whatever is that really yes or no it's a yes or no question at this point yeah Jen? um i didn't know it there's a good points that she made i wondered if um if i don't know maybe all of you but you as the liaison we've got the warren and finance meeting tomorrow night maybe in the beginning i don't know if the chair would allow us to have a couple of minutes and just kind of talk about that a little bit yeah are you jenny you zooming yeah. into that tomorrow night okay yeah we'll, we'll yeah, start it and everything yep yeah. Yeah, and I will be so. And I know the um, I, I did speak to the the chair of the Warren Finance yesterday, and um, he's all set. We'll get him up and going, and uh, school okay. committee and superintendent, everybody will be there. But it be a nice thing to point out in the beginning if we could. Right. Yep. It's a good idea. And you'll send us the Zoom number tomorrow, right? Because we're on the liaison to the school. I'm going to be at that meeting too. Uh, yep, I can send it. It's also on the website. There's a direct link. So it should okay. take you right there, but I'll send it to you. Okay. Thanks. Very good. Anything else on the warrant? Nope. Hearing none, we'll go on to new business. Appointment. Um, so I spoke to the fire chief, and he had requested that we make a um, second appointment. Deputy fire chief, as you may recall, he has one. Uh, so this would be the second one. Um, right. And I'll mute him. What do you think? You kind of went in and out. I'm sorry. I was asking for permission if you wanted him to be unmuted or not. Oh, yes. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Sorry, I, was, Rick, I had to ask. <laughs> I saw myself unmuted and muted right in like a second. So, <laughs> um, so just quick backstory. I got promoted to chief. I had to fill somebody, move somebody up. So we moved Dave Emmons up and he replaced me on April, not April. Yes, April 1st, I think. It's all blurring together with this COVID stuff. Uh, Dave Langley was stepping down as deputy chief. Got too many things going on. Still a member of the department, but didn't want to be in a chief's position anymore. So we went through our regular process, interviews, uh, board interviews, chief's interviews, review of the resumes and things like that. And Captain Wayneham was the candidate that was selected for the deputy chief's position. So. He's been promoted from us internally to deputy chief, which is C2, uh, overseeing fireside equipment, all that stuff, a, a myriad of things. And so at this point, we need to uh, come to you guys for the uh, swearing in part and, and verification of my promotion. Okay. So, and I've got him here if you want to ask him any questions. <laughs> all right, wait, come on on camera real quick. <laughs> How's it going? Hi, Wayne. Good. How you doing? Good. 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 I don't have any questions. We just wanted to see you. Definitely top of my priority list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I assume Jen, you have a appointment. Um, I have an appointment. It should, it's, I made copies in all of your folders. I've got one. <laughs> really? It's all scribbled all over, though. It, uh, the words copy are written across it so that I know where my original is. Oh, that does say copy. Okay, I didn't read it sideways. <laughs> <laughs> all 
I didn't happen to see that in my folder, so. I All right, David. David, can you read the appointment? Yeah. Sorry, I can almost read. I can almost do it by heart. But go ahead. I imagine. David. Okay, where we're gonna start? We start off top. Yep. Certain title. <laughs> Three thirty A M R S A two six O two Slugman's Office, Municipality of Acton, Maine, to Wayne Ham, the Slugman of the Municipality of Acton, do the accordance with the provisions of the laws. Of the state of Maine hereby appoint you as deputy fire chief within within and for the municipality of Acton until 11 1 2022 given under our hand is sixth day of May 2020 let's well, continue on or do I go over to the bottom oh no, that's it that's it why did we use a date that wasn't consistent with July 1st that's the same date. Time. They all the, the all the chiefs, the chief and the two deputy chiefs are all on the same time. So at okay. the end of the series fiscal you, year. You would well hopefully you guys re up us. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. All on the same time frame. These are, this is my crew, okay. these are my people that I've picked, and so we thought it would be best for us to all be together. That's okay. how the prior one was done, Ed too. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Yep. I think I think probably July first. Well, that's not no. July first. No, no it's uh... David. Listen. <laughs> oh, uh, never mind. Never mind. Wrong date. Oh, yeah, they go along yeah. with the fire chief November. appointment. Yeah. Okay. Sooner if he so wishes. Yeah, okay. Do I hear a uh, Do I hear a motion to accept? I'll make a motion to accept Wayne Ham as the deputy chief. Okay. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. Moved and seconded to accept Wayne Ham as the deputy fire chief. Any further discussion? Call for a vote. Kim? Yes. David? Yep. And the chair votes yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Okay, grant letter. And you don't have to do anything with this tonight, but I think that she's looking for um, an answer. I sent you an email on the 29th of April. Uh, this comes from Square Pond Watershed. They're in the process of doing uh, some projects in some different phases and um, with some grants in the Acton Chapel area. And she's looking for a letter of support from the town. So I was just hoping that you could read over this and see if it's something that you want to do. Um, if you get into, I'm sure you've already looked at this, but the, the second page talks about the different areas and the phases that, that they're looking at um, and where Acton ties into it. Um, I know there's some Goose Pond Road, there's a Tattle Street, there's two or three in, in Acton and Shapley. Um, so if you can read over that packet, we'll put it on for next week and see if it's something you want to do. Okay. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, yep. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Yeah, I read it today. Yeah. Okay. Um, winter salt. Um, so this I threw on the agenda because Kim had replied to the email. Um, so I wasn't sure. I wanted to make sure that you guys had seen this. Um, oh, David's gone. Um, no, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> there you are. So I did send this to you guys on the on April 15th, along with the road commissioners. This was, um, I guess it's a notice. The deadline, of course, is Friday, May 8th, uh, in regards to the winter sand. Um, this is for the state, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is a state then, right? I mean, in the past, we have, we've gone out and done our own separate salt bid, and we have, you know, used their numbers from the from the clog big just to kind of compare but um i wanted to make sure you guys had seen this email because if we, if yeah. we go ahead dave oh uh, i was uh, sorry about that I was, I was reading this earlier and typically um well i thought the call came on a lot later towards you know like July, uh, august september didn't realize this was this early but uh the only thing i i was reading on this i didn't realize last time was uh it says, um, okay, where if if you choose to accept a low bid, you are committing to buy at least 
75% of your stated quantity. And which, you know, whenever we, we've gone with our granite state over the, over the years because they match the cog every year, um, but they don't make you, you know, bind yourself to having to purchase some certain amount of material. Um, but I, I don't know. We've always done it, but I mean, we've never actually been bound to anything like that. Well, I guess if the key would be where it says if you choose to accept the low bid. Yeah. So we, you know. Yeah. I, I saw that. I saw that too. I don't want to be locked into something that. Right. You know, we where if we can get a better price somewhere else, because that's what there's look at least three places you can get salt from. Yeah. So, yeah, and I mean they're all pretty competitive. But. Well, the only problem with this is is doing this as early as it is. It really mm -hmm. isn't fair to the other companies that come and bid later because they're not going to start putting their bids out. Uh, accepting bids for their salt until, you know, like I said, usually uh, end of July, August, and September. Yeah. Um, it's a little early, but I mean, we could, I guess it wouldn't hurt. We could, we could see what the cog gives us. We don't have to accept it though, correct? I, that's kind of the way I read it. You know, you don't have to accept yeah. the low bid. No. So, so if we at least, answered them then i mean we don't have to accept it so that I, that here. so we do have a you know they do give us a um we'll have two weeks to accept or reject the low bid so if it's something we don't you know don't want to do at least we can reject it we're not tied into that i don't know yeah. what he's on either because that's what i was wondering when i saw it but that 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 that's what I was just talking about, though. Do you have the two weeks to, you know, accept it or not? And we that, haven't even gotten anything from anybody we else. We have a clue what the other exactly. place is. Right. Yeah. So maybe so we should even bother with that. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, you got you got Morton and you got uh, Granite State. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. I, I mean, did we do this last year? No, they I didn't typically like we just did. send us one. They yeah. typically just send us a, a quote, usually because we're part of the cog. I don't understand this at all because typically yeah. we pay dues in every year to be part of the state programs, and they just automatically send us our cog price. And then what we do is we call and we get prices from Granite State and Morton. And then when we get them, we look at well, well, it's the same as as the cog. So while well, we've been doing business with Granite State for you know ten years now. Yeah, um, we're gonna continue on, but this, yeah, I, I don't yeah, like I don't this. Think, I don't think I'd bother with this. Okay. Yeah, I this agree, is, David. This is different than the cog. It is. Yeah, it's, the okay. cog. Yeah, the cog is um, Southern Maine Regional Planning, and this is yeah. directly through the state. Okay. I, I still, the only thing I don't, I don't like the idea that we're not able to go to anywhere else because we'd yeah. be committed here. Yeah, and it also states, it says this, this state contract is only for municipalities and counties, does not include main DOT amounts. So, yeah, I think it was ticked with the way we're doing it, personally. Yeah. Okay with you, Kim and Dave? That's fine, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Okay. Very good. Public comment que section uh, question submitted. Jen, what do you uh, have? So I have two that I'm not going to bother to read because they were both in favor um, in favor of you removing the zoning, and since that's already happened, um, okay. I'm not going to bother reading those. If that's okay. Sure. Yep. Um, the next one uh, is a letter that uh, you guys have a copy of. I don't know if uh, do you want it read aloud. Yeah, I guess you could. Sure. If they were out of meeting, they'd be telling it out loud, right? Yep. Yep. So, Board of Selectmen and Town Administrator, after observing the committee chair meeting, I have a few questions. My takeaway was the reason we need to have a town meeting is to add new spending. Am I correct in the budget will be reduced and new spending projects inserted and the budget will remain flat? 
So Michelle, you want to answer that piece first? That's a yes, correct? Uh, well, so the budget itself will not be flat. The tax rate, our preparations are to get the tax rate flat. Um, but there is a there is a little bit of an increase in the budget. Uh, so so we, haven't, we haven't cut existing budgets. Uh, we've cut any proposed increases to the budget. Right. How does this election benefit the Acton taxpayer? Has there been any analysis about this cost to benefit? I haven't heard any discussion about the cost, mailing, printing, administration, longer time to vote. What is the total cost of a new election? The benefit, I think, the benefit, I think, was money for the fire department and added paving. Couldn't these wait for two months instead of incurring the cost of a special process election in July? If a budget could be reduced, shouldn't we be saving that money for the anticipated revenue shortfall next year? So as far as the, the, the cost of the election, I mean, that's um, that's a hard number just to come up with. I will tell you, and, and Michelle talked about the FEMA reimbursement of the 90% through the COVID expenses. Um, if we're going to have this ballot uh, counted by one of our DS200 machines because of ranked choice voting, um, I am going to have to rent another machine. We cannot use the same machine to count local ballots. Um, that's something that I learned earlier in the week. Um, so it is an expense to to, raise, to, um, to rent the machine. Um, from a clerk standpoint, if this is the direction of the board, uh, which is what you, you've given me, it's certainly worth it. I mean, it's $1,350 for the rental. Um, Michelle has already said that it's that's a reimbur reimbursable, correct, Michelle? Because it's okay. we're doing this because of the COVID. Um, but at the end of the day, I just can't have that many questions hand counted starting at eight o'clock yeah. at night. So right, and ninety percent um, of that will be reimbursed too, right? right. So the town, that, so. the town's total cost would be one hundred and thirty dollars for the rental of the machine. Okay. Um, but he's asking what the what the benefit, um, how the election benefits the, the taxpayer. So that's something. That, that's know, the tax guys, rate. My my answer to that would be, it it makes it so every citizen in the town can easily vote. Right. It, it makes a ballot available to every every person in town. And there's got to be a well. I don't know if there's a savings or not because there is more work to it. But we're doing it in one day versus a Tuesday full election day which you're open anyway from eight to eight. And then we reconvene on Saturday. So we're not doing the Saturday part of it. So. I'm hoping maybe we will get a lot more people that are gonna vote this year. Yeah. Well, Cause a lot of people don't come to town meeting. Um, right, right. Yeah, because it's on Saturday. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. It's always nice on town meeting too. It's never raining. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and, I, and I know that the, um, so the concern is that, you know, he's asking if the budget can be reduced and shouldn't we be saving the money? Um, I, I, he's asking why it can't wait a couple of months. I mean, and I guess it's the don't uncertainty. We have to, don't we have to commit taxes and we can't commit taxes unless we do this? You can go. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, so, I mean, we have to have a budget to commit taxes. Either one, we commit based on this current year's budget and leave it alone. Um, or two, we have to have a town meeting to, to move forward with these budget changes. The, uh, the downfall to using this current year's budget is that we also budget revenues. So those budget revenues would have to be part of our tax commitment as well. And those revenues um, will be too high. I, um, and and one, one issue we have is as we were talking earlier, we were going through the articles and uh, we'll use the fire, the fire truck for instance, okay? Um, the fire truck is gonna take months and months before we actually get this truck here. The, every month that we move this town meeting on and on and on and on is longer until we get this truck. Plus, if we, if we revert back to last year's budget because of a couple months which probably won't accomplish a lot. The problem is the road commissioners are gonna lose out $51,000 a piece on their paving. And if they wanna get their paving projects done, they have to know what they're gonna be spending as soon as possible. They can't know in October and then have to worry about rushing in the spring and maybe getting it done. Mm -hmm. So I think overall at the end of the day, 
Um, we, we're moving forward with a pretty much uh, flat rate on our in, no increases in the, in the uh, tax rate, and we, we got to let these departments do their job. All right, it goes on to say, are you ready for negative reaction of the voters? Lebanon votes to eliminate the five-man police force. York, one year, had to lay off 14 people, and Agunquit voters wouldn't fund the cleanup following the 4th of July fireworks. In Jefferson, Maine, one year, the fire department and school department budget were defeated. It was mentioned that we might have a reoccurrence of the COVID-19 in the future. We might not. You shouldn't use what if for making plans. A Cornell University study results state that 85% of what we worry about never materializes. If it doesn't make sense, if you were just going to talk about what your challenges are without knowing what the numbers look like. We want to make our forecast based on data, not just assumptions. What is the estimated shortfall? Well, first of all, he's assuming that we can actually have a meeting in two months. We may not even be able to have one in two months. So, um, yeah. They can they can turn around and they can um, they can vote the budget down. The only thing that you're going to lose out of that budget, you're going to lose the fire truck and you're going to lose a hundred and uh, two thousand dollars worth of paving. Paving. Everything else yeah, reverts back. back. So, so I mean I don't know how much more simple we can make this budget than what it is now, but um, that is really the only thing. And we've taken the zoning off, so that's something there that you know we're not trying to cram down the town active throat. Um, those are the only two things, and and then we I think we got the what ten thousand I believe in the uh, APAC. Yeah, but there right. one more, David. If I don't mean to interrupt you, but I got to on this one because um, it's actually, and I confirmed this with legal this afternoon. School budgets are the only ones that are allowed to revert back if a budget fails. What that means is okay. that it will use the clerk's office. If the town clerk's budget fails, then July first that office doesn't yep. open. You do not revert back on municipal budgets. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, you know, we, we want to make that clear. And it could also do it right at town meeting too. You know, same oh, idea. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, no. I just so, wanted to make sure it was you know, clear. These are assumptions, and honestly, I've heard this from members of the of the warrant finance committee. The the kickback, um, the kickback from the, the the taxpayers. I haven't heard any kickback. Most of the people of the town of Acton do understand that. We are in a situation we've never been in before, and we're trying to work through this. And, you know, the kickback is, you know, they just don't vote us back in. But we're trying to do the best job we can in the situation we're in. And we, you can go through all kinds of stuff. I can watch three different news shows that are going to tell us different stuff that's not going to happen in three months from now. We're going from what we're being told right now, what the state's allowing us to do. We're not allowed to have more than 50 people in a room. So right now, this is the only way we can do it, even into August. So. You know, we're already pushing out a month, and then we keep pushing on. We don't know if she, our governor, could extend this until October. We don't know. So this, this right now, I believe, is just getting the foot forward. Let the road commissioners do their job. Let the uh, um, fire truck go on if the taxpayers like it. If not, then we're obviously going to have to go back to the drawing board. And, and a good point to add to that, and that's well said, David, is that the other thing you're doing is you're taking the legal advice. You pay dues to Maine Municipal every year. And, you know, your treasurer, your town administrator, we've been sitting through webinars, we've been listening to, to all of these numbers and this information, and this is their direct advice. This is not, you know, Michelle and Jennifer, or it's not even the selectmen. This is the, the, the advice of the attorneys are to do not, do not use the current revenues. You know, these are the losses you're going to take. This is how you should handle it. So this is what they're telling us day to day, and they've got numerous towns that are in the same situation. I was just going to say, are the towns doing the same thing we are now? Yeah, and they're telling us, I mean, to consolidate what you can, you know, without confusing the voter, overwhelming them, we're not trying to slide anything in, you know, consolidate what you can that's clear and take off what you can, you know, take off what articles could wait. And that's why the zoning came off, the forest, you know, little miscellaneous things. Yeah, no, I think, I think it's the best case scenario, the way we're going. It's nothing that, I mean, six months ago, we didn't anticipate doing this. We were getting ready for town meeting. Right. So, you know, I Michelle, think do you want to answer the estimated shortfall just before I read the last paragraph? Um, our estimated shortfall is around 150,000. That's substantial. Yeah. Okay. All right, the last paragraph. Um, I know it's not in the benefit of the petitioners of a special project, but I think at the time 
At this time, it's the best for the act and taxpayers that we don't incur the added work and cost of elections and this and say the course of last year's budget for a few months. We can follow the main statute LD2167 signed by the governor 318 of 2020 about how taxes can be committed and dispersed by the treasurer in the emergency of COVID-19. Thank you for considering my thoughts regards Arnold Murray. Okay. Uh, Michelle, can you clarify that for us? Yeah. So I mean, taxes, there, um, there has been an executive order that will allow the taxes to be committed based on the most recent year's approved budget. Um, but yeah, that's what we want to avoid. Okay. okay. And in your packet is the, um, I, I gave you copies of the executive orders. Um, yep. Yep. <laughs> Go to Maine Municipal or you just type in State of Maine's executive orders, you can see all of them. But he, he specifically pointed out to us the March 18th and the 2020. Um, the March 18th, just very quickly, if you go down to 1A, um, there was conversations that, that we had had, you know, why can, oh, I think we talked about tractor supply. There. It's not a gathering, they're not calling the gathering. If you look at the second to last sentence, it references large conference rooms and meeting halls. Yep. Auditoriums. Um, yep. So, and then the April 29th is another one that um, thought was good to read. Uh, that touches more with the face mask and if social distancing can't be met, but it talks about the town hall some. So, right. Information, good information for you to have. Yep. Well, I, think it's, it's, I think we're on the right track. I mean, we're trying to do the best for the town that we can do under these circumstances. And, yeah. Based on the advice we're given. Yeah, yeah, the advice right. given and also to, to make this available to as many people in town as we can. So, like I explained, um, you know, I used a scenario Monday night when we had the, uh, the talk with our uh, committees. If we go into town meeting and we're still under the 50 person rule and we get 50 people show up for town meeting and that's what we have in the auditorium and someone gets up and goes out to use the restroom, someone new comes in to vote, you can't deny that person to come in to vote. That person comes in, now you, you know, the person went out, that makes it 49 in the room. New person comes in, there's 50. Person comes back from the restroom, um, that would be 51. Now you're denying that person to vote. And it's not what we wanna do. It's not what we, any of us wanna do when you can't do it. So I'm not gonna deny anybody from voting so and the big thing is too is if we're combining this with the school there's no doubt in my mind you oh. by combining this you're gonna have a lot more people and we're usually pretty close what averaging 45 yeah 45 uh, I'd, I'd, yeah, say more, I'd say more i say we're probably closer i mean some of our if you think about yeah if you think about some of the contentious ones that we voted by hand i mean they're yeah. usually, you know, 35, 38. I mean, they're, I bet we're well over 60 anyways. Yeah. Without, so without then you we were well over 50 you'll, last you'll year. You'll have 100. Yeah. 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 You could yeah. You very well have 80 to 90 people at that time, right. meeting, at least for a short period of time. Yeah. And there you go. And you're bumming. Right. right. And like I say, we don't, we don't know how long this is going to go for. And we need to move forward with, with business. So. And that was the point of that executive order to prove that we couldn't have more than that number, even if they socially distance. That number right. is just not up for discussion. Right. Right. Yep. Okay. Anything else under questions submitted or? Um, no, sir. That's it. Okay. Um, okay. I guess we're down to announcements. There's another Zoom meeting tomorrow night for Warrant and Finance. That would be May 7th, and that's at 6 o'clock. Uh, the number for entering that is on the town website, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And the Board of Selectmen and the Road Commissioners have a meeting on the 8th, which is Friday at 6 o'clock. So, and that meeting is also is that, open. Is that going to be open to the public, Ed? Yes, I believe it will be, yeah. Well, the, yeah, they have to be open. Whether or not you let people speak will be your choice. Yeah, it's okay. not a... Uh, um, not executive session, no. No, not executive session. I don't know even know how you'd do one of those on this. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Jennifer, I did have one question for you. Yes, sir. Um, and this is probably the difference between Maine and New Hampshire. New Hampshire, there's a statement that must be read prior to doing a Zoom meeting or a meeting of this sort. 
is there anything that you know of that we need to be doing with the meetings here in Maine? Um, it's almost it's almost like a, um, you know, just a. I forget. I don't know what you want to call the the statement, but just a statement of a fact, basically. A release or something. Yeah, it's on that idea. It's just you know everyone knows that this is how the meeting is done. It's pursuant to uh, different legal numbers. I just want to make sure we're not missing a step at the very beginning of this meeting. Um, I can put, certainly I can double check, and Maine Municipal does have a, like I said that link that they have in the beginning. One yeah. they had one just on how to run Zoom meetings and a bunch of recommendations. I mean, I read their directions and went through it, but. But I'll certainly double check first thing tomorrow. Yeah, I'm, I'm involved with one in New Hampshire where I work, and there is a statement they read before they start any of their meetings. So okay. I just want to make sure we're not missing a step. That's all. Okay. So um, can I ask that Judy's there? Can I ask her if the school board is doing anything? Do you mind? Sure, go right ahead. Um, Judy. Yeah, we, we didn't put anything special on there except to, you know, mention that it was that it is a Zoom meeting. Um, we just ran it like our regular meeting. We didn't have any special statement. We also got information um, from MSMA about how to run a Zoom meeting. But um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. But um, it didn't give any, it didn't say you had to say anything special at the beginning. It just said, you know, to, to do roll call votes and things like that. So. Okay. Um, there was no statement or anything that we read at the beginning of our meeting. Right. Okay. I'll double check, but it would be just good to have her opinion because I thought maybe, yep. you know, if I had missed it, maybe she hadn't. Right. Yeah, nope. appreciate that. Thanks, Judy. Appreciate it. Thanks. Okay. Um, I have nothing else. Kim, do you have anything to add? I don't. Nope. David? I don't. I'm good. Nope. Jennifer, anything else? No, sir. Okay. I guess at this time I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I'll second that. Who is second to adjourn? Okay. Um, all in favor? Kim? Yes. David? Yep. I vote yes. Okay. That's it for tonight. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for everyone that uh, zoomed in on this and and listened to us. It will be on the website. Uh, or this is going back on the website. Yeah. On YouTube, yep. Yeah, we'll it'll all be on YouTube shortly. So, um, thank you all. Appreciate it, and have a wonderful evening. Stay safe. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.